Okay, staying in the NBA, we go to the NBA trade deadline where we saw a flurry of moves. Several contending teams were active while others were content to sit back. Uh, the Bulls were one of the teams surprisingly active while the Lakers and Nets didn't end up making any moves at all. I remember we was talking about this Wednesday drink and we were a little concerned would we see nothing at all? Well, we ended up seeing quite a lot. Uh, give me your winners and losers from the trading deadline. All right, so um, I'm going to go with the obvious winner. I, mean, I think this team was a winner on most people's radar, and that's the Denver Nuggets. Um, listen, Denver going for it. I ain't mad at it. Aaron Gordon, JaVale McGee, I ain't mad at it. I, I, I see you, Denver. Um, but it, it gives them – so they created more depth in the five spot with JaVale McGee, um, which is something you want in the postseason. Even if you don't need it right now, it is something you will need in the postseason when you start adjusting in series. You might play a bigger team. You might play, you know, what, what it might have you, but now you have options. But the biggest move for me is Aaron Gordon, man. You, now you have an athletic four, possibly five if you go small, but an athletic four that can guard some of the top level teams that you're going to probably see. What do I mean by that? All right. So now you got a guy that can guard LeBron. You got a guy that can slow down AD. You got a guy that can probably slow down Kawhi, a guy that can give Paul George fits. I'm not saying Aaron Gordon's some lockdown defender, but I am saying he's so athletic and he's so young, he can slow those guys down. And that's what you need. So I was I, I was really um impressed by that move. I'm glad the Nuggets are going. They're going for it. That's what I like. I like the aggressiveness. They're going for it. One thing we say about the Nuggets, it's just so hard to take them serious because you just don't know if they're going to be in it, if they're going to go for broke. We seen them in the Western Conference Finals last year. We was like, okay, this is a team that we should see multiple years now coming up out the West. Now that they made these moves, our energy is renewed for the Nuggets now. Maybe they, they, they go back towards what we thought they would be. So I love what the Nuggets did. Another team, uh, I like what they did, um, was the Heat. So, listen, the Heat went and got a third guy in Victor Oladipo. Um, listen, I know Oladipo ain't where he used to be. I got that. But the guy's still a former All-Star. He's still a former All-NBA player, what have you. And... If he can get back to somewhat similar to that form, you got to understand, he is now on a team where he's not the lead guy. Like, let's get that correct. You mean, Oladipo, his his career kind of transpired really, really fast, if you think about it. Went to Indiana, got drafted out of Indiana, first-round pick. He goes to um, Orlando. Yep. And he's like, eh, you know, okay, to okay, we could justify this draft pick, but he's not quite what we thought we was going to get. Get traded to the Thunder. We kind of like, uh, I don't uh, know, West, yep. Westbrook and this guy, right? Like, they yep. traded him over here. He, he he was a dud for, for most purposes. Then he get traded to Indiana. That's when we see him pop, right? He pops, become an all-star, become an all-NBA player. Now here we go. We think Oladipo on the road to success. Then he gets hurt. Never quite been the same since. We have to keep that in mind. In, the, in, the, in Indiana, he was the number one. In Oklahoma City, he was the number two. He did have his best year as number one, but we haven't really seen him bounce back from there. Now he's going to Miami. He would not be the number one in Miami. He might not even be the number two in Miami, depending on who you talk to. He's a clear, and he'll probably be clear cut, clear cut the number three option behind Jimmy and Bam. Yeah. Right. So, um. I think that votes well for Houston. So I like what Houston did. Now let me get into some of my losers. And these teams, both of these, one of these teams is my loser cause, just because they didn't do anything. And that's the Lakers. I, I just didn't understand. You see the product that you're rolling out there without AD and LeBron. You seen the product. We ain't guessing. We're not estimating. You seen the product. You seen these guys get blown off the court by the Pelicans. The Pelicans get smoked off the court. Brandon Ingram made an all NBA case. They smoked him so bad. And yet it's still, you poop. I, I, look, look, I got it. The Lakers don't got a lot of leverage. They don't got a lot of pieces. They don't got a lot of money. They don't got a lot of nothing. They're just the Lakers, the brand, the glitz and glamour. I got that. Rob Palinka, to his credit, has done a lot with little. I got to give him that credit. 
He, he, he's been against the cap since he started working for the Lakers, and he still makes stuff happen. I just, you needed to do something. You had to do something to renew the energy of the clip, I mean, of the Lakers. Did I say renew the em- energy? This is what I thought the Clippers did until I looked deeper into this whole thing with Roger Rondo. <laughs> and I'm like, I understand why you get Lemon Pepper Lou out the building because he, at this point, the course that ran, I mean, he done ran his course with the Clippers. He didn't done what he done. I just don't think, I, I, just, I don't think he fit with the Clippers no more. Um, you know, it's a big change that it happened. He got used to Doc Rivers. Now it's Ty Lue calling the shots. Um, you know, Kawhi Leonard came in, changed things, Paul George, et cetera, et cetera. And I think it was just time for uh, Lemon Pepper Lou to get out. And he did. He went to Miami, and, you know, good spot, splendid. Don't be mad at it. Um, and then, you know, I, you know, I get why they, they wanted Rondo. I get it. Playoff Rondo. I got it. Once the playoffs start, your roster might might as well be better. It might be phenomenal, but you got to get to the playoffs, and that's my my problem. What are you doing between now and when the playoffs start? When Rondo is not playing well, when Rondo is kind of like they call me playoff Rondo for a reason, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm gonna show up. Now I get the point of we brought Rondo in for the leadership. Cool. I just don't know if it's going to be exactly what they need with Kawhi being the guy he is, Paul George being the guy he is, and Tyron Lou being the guy he is. It just it seems a little bit <clears throat> petty by the Clippers. Shout out to uh, Jerry West because, you know, he always out here sm- stirring up some smoke um, when it comes between the Lakers and the Clippers. So I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm not really sold on that move. I'm not. Um, and then another team in the Eastern Conference, I just, the Hornets. I just felt like the Hornets would do something else. I, Brad Watermaker. Mike, you oh, finally fuck. got it right. Oh, my God. You, Mike, you finally got it right. These boys are rolling. Come on, Mike. I just was hoping that you got one more piece to help them. Well, Lamelo out now. He's done for the season, so maybe, maybe that's why they said, "Don't worry yep. about it." He done for the season. We'll just let it ride. But yo, he got something cooking with Charlotte. He really does. He just got to do. He got to make sure he don't let this slip away out of his hands because he got something cooking. So my winners, I thought, was the Nuggets, the Heat. Um, my losers was <laughs> both LA teams right now and the, and the Charlotte Hornets. Yeah, I think the I think the the Nuggets and the Heat clear winners um, right here. Uh, Aaron, Aaron Gordon, he was a name that was you know circulating um, pretty in the days leading up. I think he wanted a trade, and they said, "Oh well, I don't want to trade," and just just get on out. Um, and Denver, Denver getting him. Now you got to think about this because it's starting out. Remember, they did give up Gary Harris, uh, but much like some guys, I'm about. I'm about tired of Gary Harris. He just like Dragic as far as yeah, I'm concerned. He just hurt like before the game starts. Yeah, and you can throw in, you know, a plethora of other guys from other sports. You got a little Deshaun Jackson to you right now. Um, so good riddance. Now you got to think about Denver with this. Think of it because this starting five is going to be electric. Obviously, you got the Joker in the middle. Uh, you got Murray running the point. Will Barton. Will Barton can score the ball for you at the two guard. And now you got two of the most athletic wings front, you know, three and four, Michael Porter and Aaron Gordon. Um, if I got, you know, whatever guy running the break and my two wings are Porter and Gordon, uh, time for liftoff, folks. Get out the way because they coming for you. It's, you know, f- flight school is in session. So that's concerning. Um, and then, of course, you know, you're playing at, you know, the mile high. So you're already having trouble breathing. I think I think Denver Denver's really interesting right now, and I know they're sitting in the five seed, but you know whatever. Uh, if Jalen Rose can come on national TV and say the Heat are the favorites in a conference from the eight seed, because he said that last night, I don't know if you heard. Uh, I, I think De- if I had to pick somebody to come out the West right now, I would pick Denver. I hey, re- whoa, whoa! 
Yes. Let's not get, let's not get disrespectful here. Hold up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We ain't even seen them play yet. They already the favorites. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm going with hey. I'm going with Denver right now. Uh, hey, but listen, obviously, the Lakers when they get healthy, that's going to wind up being the big deal. But I mean, I mean, really, other than the Lakers and their health, I mean, we saw Denver and Utah last year. Utah had them by the throat, but they couldn't finish them. I'm not sold on Phoenix in the playoffs. I mean, I know I know Chris Paul, but other than that, like, is Booker ready for this? Is Aiton ready for this? I'm not sure. And I'm 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 not sold on the Clippers right now. Their depth okay, has been bad. their depth has been ravaged. No Montrez Harrell, no Lou Williams. I get it. Playoff Rondo. I understand. But I just I'm I'm just looking at them right now and the depth that they don't have, I just, I'm unsure about them. And I don't think, I don't think they quite have enough. I I like, and not only this, think about the progression that Denver is, they're making these strides in a very, it seems like a logical progression. Um, You know, they've, they've had a lot of regular season success, you know, the last several years. Um, They lost in the semifinals uh, to Portland a couple years ago, last year. Uh, they had three, uh, two, three, one comebacks made to the Western Conference Finals. Jokic is leading the charge right now. Uh, he's playing at a he's he's in he's in the thick of the MVP race. Right. And what we saw from Jamal Murray in the bubble, he hasn't been playing to that level, but he's still playing at a reasonably high level. You know, fringe All Star. And we know based on what he did last year that he is capable of elevating his game to another level come playoff time. Now you got, and don't forget, Michael Porter. We know how hot he can get. Aaron Gordon and JaVale McGee. Now you have a guy, you know, similar to what Mason Plumley used to give them. You have an athletic big who can come in and help you in spurts and bring some energy, bring some energy off the bench. So mm-hmm. I know – it's it's definitely and it's unlike me to be a little premature in the declarations, but I'm feeling myself a little bit right now, trying to channel my inner Jalen Rose. I, I like Denver right now, and I think I think they're the team to watch in the West. Uh, but Miami, you covered Victor Oladipo right, right, uh, quite well. The great thing about Oladipo is he's coming into a situation where you don't need him to you know, come in and run a team. He doesn't have to come in like, you know, Indiana needed him to be the top guy. He doesn't have to be that right now. He can, you know, settle in, you know, get his feet under him, you know, play play free and easy because he's going to have, you know, Jimmy Butler and Bam to lean upon, you know, Dragic ever comes in. He could be the fourth option. He could be the fifth option behind Tyler Hero. You know, that's how deep Miami is. But the good thing about him and what Miami is probably banking on there's some risk because, you know, low injury, you know, whatever. But if it works, he's a guy that can carry that can carry you. And he's a guy that you can rely on to close. And maybe you don't have to rely on Jimmy Butler all the time. And you'd probably feel a little bit more comfortable relying on Victor Oladipo than a young guy like Tyler Hero. So I think I think Miami, it may not work out, but I think the risk is worth it to bring Oladipo in. Uh, and they they do offensively. That's where he can help. They they struggle every now and again to score. And I think you know when your offense breaks down, when the defense um, is able to, you know, stop your you know whatever movement that you have going on in a late clock situation, you can just say, hey, here's the ball, Oladipo, get us a bucket. I think he can do that for you. Uh, you know, other th- I think though, and I think those are the clear cut two winners of the deadline right. um, Portland Portland getting Norman Powell I think that's a big deal because now you go from uh, a two-headed monster in the backcourt to now you have a third guy you can rotate in maybe you can get them all on the floor you can downsize a little bit um, so I think now you have a, a guy who if you know when Lillard and McCullum go out of the game you can keep the pressure on and bring Norman Powell in and you still have to be very concerned, even though he's your third guy. Those, I think, those are your three. You, uh, those are three obvious winners. And I would also say an underrated team that I don't think you know has got any talk at all. I like, I like Dallas. I like Dallas picking up JJ Redick and uh, Nicolo Melli. I think the, I think Dallas is lacking some shooting 
and New Orleans, obviously, you know, they had no use for Reddick and uh, Melly hadn't been playing all that well. But I think Dallas, you know, don't forget, Dallas lost Seth Curry, big shooter for them. Uh, haven't paid, you know, the greatest amount of attention to him, but I don't think shooting has been something they've been all that great at this year from the outside. I think the team like the Mavericks could utilize Reddick and, and Melly still, you know, that's his, uh, that's his game is shooting the ball get some of his confidence back. So I think those are moves that could help them. Very underrated. I don't think, you know, people have talked about them all that much. But I, I do like those moves for that team. Uh, and, of course, now to the losers, I think uh, the the Lakers not doing anything. I think that's somewhat disappointing. Uh, but, obviously, the wild card is the buyout market. You know, two big names, Andre Drummond, LaMarcus Aldridge. Because I do think they need – they, out of all these contending teams – they they need a big body in the middle because I, I'm I'm out on Marcus Gasol, you know, f- 15, 20 minutes at the most, and I don't want to see him play no more because uh, he just he's just a non-factor offensively and defensively he's just he's just a body with a reputation. He a shell of himself. Yeah. So I, I think so I think the Lakers if they <clears throat> don't do something in the buyout market, then it's a real disappointment and. Even with obviously LeBron and AD, they can get it done for you. But it's gonna you you'd feel a little bit more comfortable if you got to upgrade at the five to help a little bit. Um, and uh, the Clippers, I'm not gonna call them a loser, but you got to remember last season the reason I was so confident in them because you had two legitimate six men. You don't have any. You don't have either one of those guys now. Because they let, you know, and I think that's a, they paid a big price to get Rajon Rondo. You know, if I told you Rajon Rondo and Lou Williams got traded for each other and there's some extra stuff that got thrown in, you'd probably say the team that traded for Rondo got the extra stuff because Lou Williams is a, he's a better player. But that, that's not what happened. Now I do get it. And we, you know, we talked about it. You know, we were talking about how the Clippers needed some help at point guard. Rondo can give that to you, but I also think they also needed a guy who can, you know, maybe a little bit of a third score because, again, your third score used to be Lou Williams, and it's not now. And I don't think it's a fair expectation to think Rajon Rondo – we know Rajon Rondo is going to come in. He's going to distribute. He's going to run your offense. Obviously, no one's going to question that, but I don't think he's a guy you want to rely on to to score to such a degree that they need. So – with, with that said, let me. So, is it possible, right, that the Clippers think with Kawhi and Paul George, maybe they think we have scoring. What we're lacking most, mostly, is leadership, because that's yeah. what hurt them last year. Kawhi not very vocal. Um, he played he, phenomenal player, but he's not that vocal as a leader. Paul George, I've never heard of him being a a, a yeah. leader per se. Um, so maybe you bring in Rondo. The reason that they paid such a steep price, is it more because of what he can do in the leadership department or like what he do as a um, distributor? Because we know he's not a elite scorer. Yeah. So maybe, you know, does that play a role in that? I, I, yeah, it could. And I think leadership is something that they could use a little bit more in that. But don't forget, they—I mean—they do have—they do have still have some vocal guys. I don't know if you want to call them leaders, but your Marcus Morris, right. your Patrick Beverly's. I'm just right. looking at the standpoint when the Lakers got Rondo, we knew it wasn't for a a super big role. We knew it was just he was just going to come in and spots. The to me, this seems like there's a greater expectation being placed on Rondo. I think they're going to rely on him more than what the Lakers needed last year. And I guess that's where I'm concerned because I don't but think. That's, but that's because if you think about it, you didn't have that big void in leadership or scoring yeah. for that fact of the matter. You got LeBron James that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's probably the ultimate like leader. Behind. You got Chris Paul up there <laughs> and whatnot, but you don't, you say Rondo, go out here and run this bench unit, get them right. And that's what he did. Like you said, now, I think he's gonna be like, is hey, we need you to go out there and get Kawhi in the game. We need you to go get Paul George. You know what I'm saying? And like you said, it might be too much. We'll see, but I do agree with you with it. They're asking a lot, I think. The other um 
you know, we we talked about Boston already. Um, I have to tell you, I'm not I'm not enamored with what Boston's got going on. I'm always, you know, at dur- during the trade deadline time, you're always looking to identify. You know, they call them buyers and sellers. You have to pick one. You have to pick if you're going to be a buyer or a seller. I don't like teams that do both. And I think that's what Boston did. Boston came out here. They got Evan Fournier, whoop de doo And then they trade Daniel Tice to Chicago. That th- Those two moves seem to be a little bit contradictory. I do hear what you're saying about the buyout market. If Boston is in on that and they're trying to get Drummond or Aldridge, then it makes more sense. But much like the Lakers, I think Boston and L.A., they have to get one of those guys in the buyout market for you to look at the trade deadline and say they did something. Because Daniel Tice is a pretty critical piece of that team. Doesn't, Doesn't light up the scoreboard, but on the defensive end, he's a guy who is kind of their anchor. And without him, I do. And obviously, I like Robert Williams. I'm just not sure if Robert Williams is ready for this. You know, it's a it's a pretty big jump to go from a guy who's playing, you know, 15, 20 minutes off the bench and a guy you push into the starting lineup and rely upon exclusively to be your five. That's a that's a tough ask. And then, of course, you know, Evan Fournier. And the reason this is the difference to me, why I think Portland the addition of Norman Powell is a much better addition of Norman uh, me, of Evan Fournier because we've seen Norman Powell on the biggest of stages and we know what he can do. Um, Evan Fournier, we've seen him in the first round of the playoffs and I've seen him in the first round of the playoffs. You know, the, t- you, the magic of getting blown out and Evan Fournier, you couldn't find him. And then all of a sudden, oh, it's the fourth quarter. We down 20 points. Oh, yeah, I got some three pointers for you. Well, thanks. We, we already lost, Evan. We lost. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm I'm not sold. I'm not. I understand averaging 20 points. You know, shooting like 46 percent from the floor. A career, you know, 38 percent shooting from three. I get all but, that. My my question is, what is Fournier going to do? He's not going there to be a number one or a two. I hope not. I don't know what he was in Orlando. I. I, I think on Orlando, you probably consider a three, maybe a three. Yeah, because you got to kind of put him behind Vucevic and Gordon, right? I mean, but he's he's going to the Celtics. It's listen, the Celtics got their championship pieces. They're just building on a little depth. That's why I don't. I think it's a pretty good move. Did they give away some? Yeah, but I wanted to ask you, what did they get for Tice when they traded him away? That was okay. That was a three-team deal, right. I believe. They ended up with okay, Luke Cornett and Mo Wagner. So right. I don't like. So that's why I don't think Boston traded him away because they was like, "Hey, you're not doing good enough." Or I think he just was a piece that was enticing enough to make this trade work. And that's why I'm not too. I'm not too far away from the idea of Tice getting bought out and somehow ending back up with. Boston, just because they had to make that mm. move. Um, I'm I, I, some tells me that could happen, but like I think you've been a little hard on Fournier because his responsibility is different. That matters. That's okay. That's a good point. That's a good point because you're right. I think yeah, what he's going to be asked to do in Boston because Boston has Kemba, Jalen Brown, and Jason Tatum. Uh, I'm just looking at a guy who, when I've seen him in the playoffs, I haven't been all that impressed. I think in this in this case, it looks like it could be more of a six man role. I'm just I think without Tice, because that obviously pushes Robert Williams up. But I think Boston with their best guys on the floor, we know they need Smart, Kimba, uh, Tatum, and Brown. Can you put? I don't know if you you can't. I don't think you could put Fournier out them with those guys. That's that. Those are your best five players probably. But they just no, I think they're kind of. They're, but make, make them a six man. I just feel like they're going to be a little small, and obviously small isn't a bad thing in today's NBA. But I think they're going to. I think against in 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 some matchups and in a series, they're going to have trouble on the glass. Right. I you think, don't. You can't. You can't play the seventy sixes with that. You can't play yeah. the Walker with that. You might get away with the Nets because they three best scores are like whatever. Yeah. But 
You're right. You, it's, it's tough sell. It has it it it, ha- it almost has a little bit, and not as far as Houston went, but it, it's a little small ball to me, and I, I just think it may be a little too much. Obviously, it remains to be seen how it'll work. We'll, we'll give it some time and we'll see how it works. And you know, maybe I am being a little too hard on Fournier, but also another thing, I, I don't think you say anything about the Bulls. I'm just confused. No, I'm confused about Chicago. Um, you know, you don't often see a 10 seed be this aggressive at adding like pieces that can help you right now. You get Nikola Vucevic, you get Daniel Tice. I, I don't know how, I don't know if I see that necessarily working, uh, but at least they trying and Billy Donovan, we know he's a good coach. Maybe he's got something in the works. Um, and also last point, uh, Orlando, it was time, Orlando, blow it on up. You know, you, you've had a couple playoff runs at the seven, eight seed, uh, but yeah, Vucevic, Gordon, Fournier, you can add in other pieces, you know, they, you know, it, it was time. So props to you. It's good. It's good to know. It's good to similar almost to Houston. It's good to know when it's over and you got to, tear it on down and start building on back up. So congratulations. You figured it out. 